Hey there. Happy weekend for me. It's Saturday morning. I've been dreaming of the weekend since the end of last weekend and how much more I have to get done here in this garden. I am going to focus this morning though on cultivating. Based on my moon calendar, I can see that for Saturday, September 25th, we're right in the middle of a transition between good for root crops and then your barren period. Um, the main key here that I can see is going to be cultivate and pruning. So it really looks like this is a good time to love your garden. I've been looking up what to do for cultivating. It's a lot of preparing the soil and getting your soil together. Um, and my soil, of course, is in my pots and have things growing out of them. So I'm just going to give it a little love. I'm going to clean them up, make sure there's no leaves and debris inside there. Take those leaves and debris that's in there and actually put it in my compost pile. And then I got a couple of other projects that I'm going to take care of this weekend and hopefully be showing you along the way. So let's go ahead. We'll take care of this garden and we're going to do a quick little garden tour as we're taking care of it. I've got my harvest apron on. I've got a little uh, plant holder, cheapy plastic thing. I'm just going to throw some of the leaves and stuff inside there, use it as my bucket. And I'm just going to go from plant to plant to plant, checking, seeing what I can pull out and how I can spruce these babies up. My super great Fisker scissors that I've been using to cut things with has this little orange lock that goes here and it actually broke off and I just stabbed myself with it. It's all right, they still function. I just gotta be more careful. I have them out because look at this basil. A lot of people have talked about how basil gets bitter when it goes to seed. I don't know what that will entail, but we are gonna clip it and see what happens. Can you tell? I actually have no idea how to clip basil, but we're just cutting and going and I'm going to take off these leaves and dry them out and see if I can make my own dried basil. I'm here in one of the pepper rows. And once again, these banana peppers have skyrocketed in how big they're getting. I've looked up a couple of recipes on canning these banana peppers and I'm definitely gonna do it. Gotta go to the store, get some apple cider vinegar. I only have white vinegar and we're gonna do it. We're gonna see how it works out. But let's get these bad boys off. One thing that's actually happened here inside this uh, banana pepper plant, see all that dirt that's built up? We're pretty sure those are from ants. There's a large ant mound out here on the outside and we think they've gone inside this container and this is the dirt they've started moving up. We're gonna let them be. It's gonna aerate the dirt inside this container these ginormous banana peppers don't seem to be minding. So we're just gonna let it go the rest of the season. I have not taken any of the poblano peppers off. I thought maybe they would change a little bit in how they feel and how firm they are. 
they have not. I'm gonna continue to let them grow on here. Um, I don't have a recipe for them just yet. We have some ideas of what we'd want to do. But they look great. We're just gonna keep them on here and let them keep growing. I have worked in healthcare for almost 20 years now. And one thing that I have learned from healthcare is that your body has like a living well of cells that want to go and find your problems in your body and fix them and heal them. And one analogy is to say that it's a fire. If you've got a hurt knee, the living well inside your body is going to want to go to that fire in your knee and put out the fire. If you have multiple areas of your body that are hurt, you only have the source within that one well, so your water has to be a little bit less to each area so that it can take care of all of those fires. I'm applying this analogy and this idea of healing also to my plants. So if there's something on my plants that don't look good, I'm gonna take those something off so that the living well inside my plants can send those nutrients and that life force, if you will, to the good parts of my plant and keep growing on the good parts and not worry about those bad parts anymore. Let me show you an example. Here's our gorgeous eggplant. It's got some beautiful vegetable fruits, I don't ever know what to call it, uh, growing on them. I've got some big ones inside here. You can see one back there. But see these leaves? See how some of them are yellow and not as happy and vibrant as the good green ones? I'm gonna take all these yellow leaves off. I'm going to remove the need for the plant to try to take care of these sick and hurt leaves. I'm also cultivating the soil, so I'm gonna take all of these dead leaves and so forth out of the bottom here. This is just gonna be me applying my love to the soil and to the plant to promote healthy, gorgeous, huge growth. gorgeous eggplant. I want this eggplant's life force to go to the area of the plant that looks the best. The area of the plant that's going to be giving me some fruit. Here's one little one. Can you see it? So I'm going to take off any of the yellow leaves, any of the leaves that don't look very healthy. I'm also going to be taking any of the dead things out of the soil down here to give my cultivating love to this soil. I want the life force of this plant to go to the areas that will benefit from it the most, not from the areas that probably aren't gonna come back. looks green but it's been bitten a lot of. I don't want the plant to have to focus on this leaf. There are times when people will talk about removing the suckers, like especially on tomato plants. As they're growing, you want to remove those suckers as they're growing up. To me, even if it's not in the place of a sucker, it could still be sucking the life out of your plant, and you don't want that. Let's go ahead and harvest this big boy. This one too.
My green bean plant has bounced back so well since being attacked by all of those worms. And then we took the time to get all the worms off and kill them, clip off any of the dead heart leaves, and it's really doing great. However, this odd thing has popped up inside here. I have an app that tells me what plants are because I'm not as knowledgeable as so many people, and it's called Dog Fennel. Um, it says it can be poisonous, so it's gonna go. I'm gonna say it was definitely in the way of my green beans. The Numex Twilight has done exactly what I wanted it to do. I took a ton of purple off so that some of these other purples could turn into yellow and reds and oranges. And it's working, it's happening. Another pepper plant. See how the leaves can just fall off of your pepper plants? I'm cleaning those up today. And a couple of the pepper plants I've noticed, they'll drop their own peppers, not necessarily because they're ready, but like I found some tiny peppers that have dropped in other of the pepper plants. Let's see if there's any over here. No. But in researching about compost, Peppers contain capsaicin in the seeds, and capsaicin can be very spicy and can remain spicy in your soil. So you want to make sure that you're getting rid of that capsaicin. You don't want to put the spicy peppers in a worm farm. You don't want to put the spicy peppers in your compost pile because it'll carry through. So I'm making sure because I plan to reuse the soil to pick up those peppers and not let them get buried. Doesn't this pepper plant just look so much better after having its soil cleaned up and all the yucky, unhappy, unhealthy leaves and stems taken off? I even found, found a couple of dead little peppers that were hanging on here. Not this one, of course. Oh, and that one fell. Maybe it was dying. But I took all these bad ones off too. Let the plant focus on the good. Look at how beautiful this Mexican sage has become. I'm so in love with it. I actually don't know what to do with it. I can use the leaves to make a smudge stick. And these flowers I actually think I'm going to cut off and try to make a wreath out of. I cut two off yesterday and let them sit out and see how they do. And they seem to be holding their shape and form pretty well. So I might make a wreath out of them. I will let you know. But isn't it gorgeous? Can you see them running everywhere? This is why I have to wear boots. We have a huge ant problem. Next thing to talk about is the corn. Now you re may remember this first thing of corn, the green beans have started growing up it and they've actually come back to life. There's some sort of crazy bug on it. I don't know what that is. But these green beans have really bounced back in life, which is awesome. But the corn has not. It still seems to be alive. It's still green, but the main stalk is all purple and dead looking. And it's never produced a thing of corn. I think it tried to down here. Like this. But this is actually going to go in the front yard, be repurposed, and become Halloween fall decorations. Now, this corn did give me an ear of corn and I came out here the other day 
and squeezed on it and it's squishy. It's really squishy. It's not corn by any means. It's also started to get that same discoloring the other one has. So this one too is gonna go in the front yard and become Halloween fall decoration. Look at these ants and what they've done around this corn. They are gonna be so mad when I move it. They've got another pile here too. I mean, literally, they are all over our yard. Here's my glorious golden rockin'. This, with the leaves and its sadness, Mr. Winston is barking up a storm. With the leaves and its sadness is normally what it does when it's really thirsty, but we've actually been watering it a lot because it looks so sad. And it's now got all these red flowers all over it. As you heard, Mr. Winston was going absolutely crazy because my daughter came outside and started playing on her scooter. So to get back at me, he ate my moon calendar. Guess I'll have to make a new one or salvage this one. Another pepper plant. See how the leaves can just fall off of your pepper plants? I'm cleaning those up today. And a couple of the pepper plants I've noticed, they'll drop their own peppers, not necessarily because they're ready, but like I found some tiny peppers that have dropped in other of the pepper plants. Let's see if there's any over here. No. But. In researching about compost, peppers contain capsaicin in the seeds and capsaicin can be very spicy and can remain spicy in your soil. So you want to make sure that you're getting rid of that capsaicin. You don't want to put the spicy peppers in a worm farm. You don't want to put the spicy peppers in your compost pile because it'll carry through. So I'm making sure because I plan to reuse the soil to pick up those peppers and not let them get buried. I'm on to the third bucket. I had to get a bigger one. This is all the scraps that are gonna go in the compost, but I wanted to show you the Fresno chili plant. You may remember that the chili plant had broken during one of our recent storms, and it looked like it was still alive, so I was letting it be. Y'all, it's still growing peppers. It's still got plenty of life left in it. I'm just going to keep letting it do its own thing. These tomato plants are holding their own, staying tall, now that we've put that line in here to kind of hold them up. Some of the tomatoes are starting to look really good. I'm really excited about them. However, some of the tomato plants are looking a little yellow. Surprisingly, the littler ones look worse than the bigger ones. So this weekend, I plan to work on my worm farm, work on making more of a detailed video for you regarding my worm farm, and we're gonna put some castings in with these tomatoes. On the outside, in a ring-like fashion, is what I heard will work well with the castings. So let's see if they can help these tomato plants. Look at them. Look at these tomatoes. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. Look at the bottom of these tomatoes. They look great, but the bottoms do not. I wonder why that is. I'm going to have to find out. You may remember this pepper plant that's next to my watermelons. That's too big of a bag to move. And I came out here 
maybe last week, maybe the week before and did a video and had noticed how sickly this was looking. It made me so sad. I didn't know what was up with it. And it's actually started springing back to life. I've already taken a lot of the dead leaves off. There's one right there that's still remaining. Here in South Carolina, we had a couple of days, well, actually several days, where the heat index was over 100 degrees. And it's my understanding that maybe this was like sunburnt. I didn't know leaves got sunburnt. See how that leaf is? I mean, maybe it was sunburnt and not disease? I hope so. I mean, it's coming back to life. These watermelons are sure a pain in the tuchus. That one got ate by something. It's got a little hole in it, but I'm letting it still grow because it doesn't go all the way through. There's one over here, my squash looking friend. I don't know what's up with that. And then we had this super awesome one that was hanging right here, but look at it. It's like shriveled up like a pepper. And we've been watering these like crazy. I don't know, maybe the heat got to this one too. But there's a couple since I cut the other watermelon off last week, there's a couple of beautiful flowers here. So maybe we've still got time for some watermelons. I don't know. Maybe this will just be a season where we aren't really getting any. This basil smells amazing. We've got some eggplants in here, some peppers in here, cayenne peppers. But really the basil, it just keeps wafting up to me and it smells so good. All right, we've got a lot done already this morning and I think I've only been out here for about 20 minutes. I've got three containers that have all kinds of clippings and trimmings and decaying that will go great in the compost pile. I have cleaned up my backyard quite a bit. I'm so happy. Everything's loving life and I am loving creating this life. My name's Danielle. I am the Zodiac Tiller. I hope that you've enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a like. If you have any suggestions about what to do about anything here in my garden, leave me a comment. Let me know. Subscribe to my channel. I'm getting distracted by all the leaves falling around me. I'm so excited. So I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you return for another video soon. I always think this crow is talking to me. He's a messenger. I just don't know his message.